Okay, so this is the Lihiro 6.7 camera, and uh, it's a, a formerly Mamiya Press camera that has been reconstituted with a uh, 3D printed body in the middle, so it's much lighter and more portable. Um, basically, it's got a the the back from the Mamiya Press camera. That's what is back is on the uh, back side here, and then on the front we have the lens, uh, and then on top we have a viewfinder. So those are the three pieces that have come from the old camera, and then we've printed the body in between as well as this uh, colorful grip we have over here to the side. So to load the camera or to unload it, we need to take the grip off, and to do that we need to first take off this cable release here. So I'm just going to unscrew on the front of the camera uh, to remove the head of the cable release and then just take that right out. And then the grip should slide off, and we can set that aside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the lens cap on for the moment and lay my camera down face down on the counter here. And I'm going to go ahead and, and pop this little notch over here to open the back of the camera and flip that open. And on the inside here, we'll see that we've got our dark slide, which is blocking the light from the lens right now. And we've got a little spool of the last film, roll of film that went through the camera on this side. And then over here, we have uh, uh, where the spool will we'll transfer the spool over, and that's going to be the take-up spool. You can see that that as we wind here, this spool is, is spinning over here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and remove this uh, spool on this side, the empty one, and transfer it over, which is pretty typical when we open up a medium format camera. We always have to do that. Take that out and carefully pop it in over here. I just want to make sure that that's seated in there properly, and then you can just wind this a little bit so that the slot is facing up like that. Then we're going to grab our roll of film, and this one's already been um, been uh, opened. I've taken off the, uh, the the piece of paper that closed it. I'm just making sure it's nice and sealed here, and we've got our leader exposed here, and I'm going to go ahead and insert that on this side. And again, just want to make sure that that's seated in there like that. And then we pull this out a little bit and insert this into the slot here. And then start winding until the arrow, there's going to be an arrow on the piece of paper in a second. And as with every medium format camera, there's always an indicator where to stop. We just want to stop when those, uh, the arrow points to the two little notches on this camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the back now. And make sure that the back locks closed. So I press up on that little clip there and just make sure, you know, with your finger here that this is nice and tight. Uh, now, flipping up to the top here, we should see a, an S over here in the little window, which is, means that we're at the start and we need to wind that ahead to the number one. Uh, with these backs, we want to make sure that the um, metal thing is pointed over towards the arrow and that just means that it's going to advance to um, advance the film as we do this. And we're going to go ahead and you can see there it's starting to move. Uh, now it's blank. We're going to keep winding this until it gets to the number one, and it should stop for us when it does that. And there's the number one, and it stopped automatically. So again, you can't overwind this. It's not going to let us keep winding. And that means that now we've got a fresh piece of film uh, in the back of the camera um, facing our lens. Okay, so next step is going to be to put the camera, uh, put the, put the uh, grip back on. It's reversing our process here. Slide the grip on from the bottom and insert our cable release back in place. Now, um, to, to use the lens, uh, to use the camera and take a picture, we're going to take the lens cap off. We also want to make sure to take our dark slide out. So those two things, the camera can be operated with the dark slide and the lens cap on. So it's really important that you make sure that you always remember to take those off. Otherwise, you'll you know, have take pictures potentially, but not have anything captured on the film. Uh, so using this lens, first of all, we've got a, a shutter mechanism here to cock the shutter. Oh, this one's already cocked, so I'm going to go ahead and just um, click it here so that the shutter is now uncocked. Um, this little lever here is going to cock in a, a, our shutter when we're ready to take a photograph. So we cock that over like that. Again, the cable release will trigger it. You can also manually trigger these shutters by just clicking that little lever there. So if you ever don't want to use the cable release, 
there is a way to manually click them like that. Um, the shutter speed and the aperture are controlled by, the shutter speed is by this ring here. So it goes from a 500th of a second all the way down in, in full stops to half a second, one second, and then lastly to the B for bulb setting. Um, the other, the aperture control is at the bottom of the lens. And you can see there this little uh, metal arrow points up to a number from 6.3 all the way out to 32. So I can just adjust that by just using my finger to slide that over 6.3, 8, f11. And this is a variable aperture, so I can stop at any point in between those, and it's just going to close or open the leaves, aperture leaves accordingly. So based on your light meter, you can set this to you know 11.3 or 11.6, whatever you need in terms of an aperture that corresponds with a shutter speed. Um, so at that point, we're ready to take a photograph. So again, we want to make sure our shutter is cocked, which it is. We set our, our shutter speed. Now let's go ahead and set it to 30th of a second. Pretend our light meter indicated that at f11. And uh, lastly, we need to make sure our focus is set correctly. So this, these cameras use a manual focus. Um, there's no connection between the focus and the viewfinder, so there's no prism to adjust or to, to use for your focus. You have to basically guess or estimate the focus and use your um, uh, uh, what's called zone focusing to basically help you make sure that you have everything in focus. So zone focusing basically means that at a particular aperture you're going to have a range of distances in focus, and using the guide that's on the, on the lens uh, ring here, you can see exactly what distances will be in focus at each aperture. So on this side, we have 6, 3, 8, 11, 16, 22. And on this side, we have 6, 3, 8, 11, 16, and 22. So that distance between those gets bigger as you get to a smaller aperture, meaning you have more stuff in focus. So if we have to shoot at f6.3, we're only going to have a narrow range of stuff in focus in between those two numbers, 6.3 and 6.3. And we would go ahead and, again, estimate our focus. And again, you might put the estimate kind of in the middle there, and then you'd know that you'd have uh, a range. So let's say you estimated that distance at two meters or about six feet, and you'd know that you would have from one and a half meters in focus out to almost three meters in focus at f6.3. So you still have some, some safety there in terms of focus, um, but you don't have very much uh, in, in focus. However, if you're able to focus, if you're able to shoot at f16 or f22, then you'll be able to have a much greater range in your zone focus. And for example, at f22, we could basically, even if we, you know, were, were wanted something close to infinity, we can have from infinity all the way down to uh, almost um, one, one meter. So almost the entire range that the camera can capture um, can be in focus at f22. Okay, so one more thing about uh, the bulb setting. So bulb, uh, as you may recall, means that uh, basically the shutter will stay open as long as you are holding down uh, the, the cable release, as long as, the, as long as you're holding down the shutter, it will stay open when you take a photograph. So that's great for long exposures. So we can use this camera to take a one second, five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or maybe even an hour long exposure if we wanted to using that bulb setting. So how do we do that? We set it to the B for bulb setting. We cock our shutter, which is cocked right now, and we set our aperture to what the aperture wants to be. And then we use the cable release here, and we want to be on a tripod, of course, so that our camera is nice and stable. And then we can go ahead and hold down that shutter. And once I do that, the shutter is open right now, and it's going to stay open until I let go of my cable release. So you can actually see there in the center, the, uh, in the lens, the, the aperture is still open right now. And as soon as I let go, it's going to close up. So that was maybe about a 10-second exposure. If I wanted to do a really long exposure, these cable releases have uh, a locking mechanism, most of them. They have a little screw thread here that you, you screw in, and that will hold the cable release open. So again, if I wanted to set this up for a 10 or 20-minute exposure, I don't want to hold that lever down that entire time. So again, cock my shutter, uh, open, the, open the shutter by pressing it down, and then screw this little thread in like that, and go ahead and leave it like that. Walk away from the camera, come back, you set your alarm, remind yourself after 10 or 20 minutes, however long your exposure needs to be, come back, unscrew the thread, and the shutter will close.
So then to, you know, to wind, uh, wind the camera to take my next exposure, go ahead and, and wind over until it gets to the next number. So now it's at number two. It's ready to go ahead and take my next exposure. And again, keep winding. And again, these, these backs here have a safety mechanism so you don't accidentally wind ahead. So make sure this is notched over or pulled over to the right here towards that arrow, and then it will wind to the next frame and stop automatically. And cock your shutter, adjust your aperture shutter speed, adjust your focus, and take your picture, and keep doing that until you finish your roll of film. Um, again, these cameras, the 6.7, will do 10 exposures. The 6x9 will do uh, 8 exposures. So again, you're, uh, you'll see that in your guide here in the little window. And when you get to the last exposure, I'm just going to zoom ahead here. Okay, so after you take your last exposure, here's we're at, we're at number 10 now on this roll of film. Take the last exposure, and at that point, I'm going to go ahead and, and wind the rest of the paper into the um, into the spool. And I just keep winding it until it basically stops making any noise, it gets a bit looser, you can kind of hear it now. And at that point, I'm going to go ahead and open the back. So I'm going to remove my cable release again, pop that out, slide off my grip and carefully open the back of the camera. And now we see that the film is transferred from this side up to our take-up spool on this side, and we can go ahead and pop that out. And uh, unlike the colorful paper we had at the start, now we've got, uh, says Kodak 120 exposed. Let me go ahead and fold this underneath here. And then um, if we hadn't already used this for our demo, there'd be a, a kind of a, 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 another piece of paper here to seal it, and you can kind of lick it like a stamp and seal it up and bring that with you to the darkroom, and you're ready to process your film.